It's time for our afternoon keynotes. Please join me in welcoming J.J. Fleeman, CEO of Ahol Delays USA. J.J. will be interviewed by Grocery Shop's Vice President of Content, Joe Laszlo. Welcome to the grocery shop stage. So it's a pleasure to be here, Joe. Um, welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a good lunch. Um, JJ, you're six months into the role of CEO of Ahol Delays USA. Congratulations. Thank um, you. I'm sure there's been a lot of learning going on. Kind of, what's been your key focus uh, as uh, you've stepped into the role? Yeah. Well, it's um, it's obviously been a real pleasure to to work alongside the team and. Uh, the opportunity to lead an organization that I've been with for about 33 years is a, is a real pleasure. I, I think I've leaned a lot into my experience. I've been in grocery business my entire life, and so trying to keep things simple at first is really important to me. I think we have a tendency to, to overcomplicate the business. I don't know about the folks here in the room if you would agree with that, but uh, it's important to, you know, to stay focused. I've, I've spent a lot of time focusing with the teams, listening to how we're winning, listening to what the opportunities are. And of course, the last part of the year here, we're looking to finish the year strong, but also being really clear about what our 2024 uh, priorities are. Excellent. Let's talk a little bit about those in, in a sec. But what's, is there, g given your experience, the answer might be nothing, but was there anything that surprised you as you've taken over as CEO that you weren't really expecting either about the role or about the world that you're experiencing? Yeah. You know, I don't know that there's anything that necessarily surprised me, but um, maybe a few things that I was able to kind of reconfirm and validate is our people make the difference, right? Our people are key to our success and true of, of each of you here in the room, you're the key to your company's success. And I think that creating the right environment for our teams, making sure that our teams have the tools and the technology that they need in order to be successful. and making sure that you create an environment to where people can be heard and, and uh, try to solve problems together. So I've reconfirmed that, I would say. That's fantastic. Um, one of the big themes at Grocery Shop this year is what we've started calling unified commerce. I mean, it's really a, a euphemism for omni-channel, that idea that people don't like just shop in stores and yeah. online is two completely separate things. Those kind of lines are very blurry these days. Um, and it's up to retailers and brands to some extent to kind of adapt to that more fluid path to purchase that, that people are making. Like, where, where would you say Ahold's banners are on that, that journey towards a, a unified commerce future. Yeah. Actually, I like, I like that term unified commerce, Joe. I, I think we're actually really good at it. Um, it's a key stri uh, priority for us and a key strategy for us in our mobile first uh, strategy. I think that if you look at uh, our legacy, we've been, you know, we've been a long-term local retail brand. We also had 30 years of e-commerce and we've created that unified shopping experience over the last couple of years. And to your first question, how are we doing? I actually think we're doing quite well at it. Uh, we've made some key strategic investments and one that um, for me that I'm most proud of, I had, the I had the opportunity and pleasure to lead the team that built our, uh, our customized owned property that we call PRISM. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one that uh, I think that uh, has set us apart not only from the ability to kind of fully integrate or get that unified commerce experience, as you've said, but it also gives us the opportunity to connect with consumers in the way that they want to be uh, connected with and allowing them to shop with us in whichever channel. Uh, is most important to them that day. Yeah, yeah, it feels it feels like flexibility is incumbent on everybody in in this room, right? Because you got like the the Gen Z millennial types who live on their phones and and kind of want to interact with you, find out what's on special that way. You also still have a large contingent of consumers who who like the printed circular, and so yep. like you kind of think you might be able to pull the plug on that, but that upsets a whole lot of folks yeah, who also sure. shop your stores. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, cool. Um, another thing that the industry is super excited about, I think it'll be a frequent topic of conversation, is retail media. Um, yep. You guys relaunched AD retail media. It's, it's so interesting to see somebody like Al Delez actually sponsoring a show yeah. like Grocery Shop because there's this new product, there's this new opportunity. Um, yeah. 
Talk to me a little bit about your kind of milestones yeah. with uh, AD Retail Media. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, of course, a really important topic. I would imagine one that's on a lot of people's mind here. I would first point right here in the first row, Bobby Watts, right there. Bobby, <laughs> raise your hand. Bobby's the proud uh, leader of uh, AD Retail Media. I'm super proud of Bobby. I think that maybe a couple of facts. So uh, our uh, digital media income is up about 70% year over year. I think we've done a nice job of balancing our our in-house talent along with really being humble learners and partnering with some experts um, from outside of the, the food retail space, which has gave, given us, a, I think, a really strong capability set. Uh, of course, we're really maximizing that opportunity, partnering with our CPGs, allowing them to work with our local brands, but also being able to leverage the full size and scale of Ajo Delays. I think as we look to the future, of course, uh, standardization of measurement is, is going to be a, a really important topic for, for us all. And I think that probably the last thing that I would share on that point, uh, Joe, is that I think it's important that we not think about these as separate from our business. At the end of the day, if we're doing retail media well, we're giving our CPGs a better return on their investment, and we're giving our customers a better shopping experience by providing him or her uh, with the products that they're looking for. Yeah, no, I, I think it certainly feels like it's key to keep an eye on how all of this is changing the, the customer experience, whether they're shopping in-store or, or online. You never want to be in a situation where somebody yeah. feels like they're being just, you know, when, when they just want to do their grocery shopping and they're being kind of forced down paths that, that kind of take sure. them away from that, right? Yeah, it should be natural, huh? Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's su super exciting. Um, and, you know, again, I think something we'll be talking a lot about the next uh, the next couple of days. Um, have you, has, has Ajo Delez USA talked at all about kind of where they expect that business to go in the next year, two years? Uh, yeah, we have uh, we have a pretty big budget on it, I would say. And uh, you know what we what we continue to see is is a good balance of making sure that we're putting our dollars in the right in the right channels. We're making sure that we're partnering with CPGs in a way that we're maximizing their returns, but also making sure that we're really accelerating and improving the shopping experience for for our customers. And of course in turn, making sure that we have tools that uh, make the jobs easier for our teams. Yeah, fantastic. Um, well, a third big thing that's on the minds of the audience, uh, this grocery shop, is shrink. And the yeah. problem of, of shrink across the in entire industry, um, yeah. not to pick on one of your banners, but, but there's sort of all that news a couple of weeks ago about the giant in the DC area that's pulling some national brands off its shelves because they just get stolen so, so much. Yeah. Um, is shrink keeping you up at night? Um, you know, there's not much that keeps me up at night, so... Um, <laughs> You're a better sleeper than I am. Sh shrink wouldn't be... Uh, well, my, my youngest son just started uh, his freshman year at his university. He has woken me up a few times <laughs> at night, but... Uh, um, you know, it doesn't keep me up at night, but I appreciate the question. It's a, um, it's a real issue when you think about your, the specific... Um, store that you're referencing is at our giant food uh, company. It's, it's one store. Um, we have taken the opportunity inside of that one store in, you know, a very uh, important category, but one category in, in health and beauty care to pull some of the national brand products from the store uh, to see if we can get retail theft under control. Um, I think it's important that we always remember that um, we all have the pleasure of being in environments like this and opportunities like this because the people in our stores and the people in our distribution centers and the people in our call centers are on the front lines working every day and making sure that those those men and women in our stores are safe. And so we've taken some uh, we've taken some uh, focus areas like that. But in addition to that, we've reached out across the industry. We've worked with other retailers. Our AP teams have worked with local law, law enforcement. Yeah. Um, we've, we've invested in technology, uh, leveraging AI to really identify you know, unscanned items at the, at the self-checkout. We've, we've got technologies that many people here have seen where you know, shopping carts will lock up if we identify something that hasn't uh, been scanned, but I think it's in, important to, to remember that it takes us all to make a difference on this topic, and uh, and for sure we think that we're making uh, really good improvements in that area. That's 
A great answer, and I think like so many challenges the industry faces, it's a blend of technology and, and human um, ingenuity that, that will help overcome yeah. it. Are there things that you're working on with your manufacturer partners around just kind of the way SKUs are designed, packaged, and whatnot that, that can help combat this issue? Oh, for sure. I mean, many of our uh, CPG partners make us uh, products and different fixtures, and we run tests together to see if we can reassort stores, that we can, you know, reallocate aisles in certain ways, move products. And so there's, there's an awful lot of innovation, not only in pack size, but also around shrink management throughout the, uh, the entire industry. Yeah, certainly I, I, wish, I wish it was an area where there didn't need to be ingenuity, but it's, it's nice that there are so many smart people working on uh, finding ways to combat the problem. For sure. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, let's come full circle back to kind of the unified commerce and, and e-com and the role of e-com in, you know, whole delays is banners these days. I feel like, you know, there was that boom in e-commerce following on the heels of the pandemic. It feels like there's, there's kind of been a, not a retrenchment back necessarily, but a deceleration, let's say, at the pace at which e-com is, is growing. Is there, is there like a, a target, a right size, like like how much of your business yeah. would you want to be coming over digital channels versus, yeah. versus in-store? Yeah, good question. You know, Joe, I'm working, uh, working in a room here with some very, very uh, talented people that in some cases are competitors, so I won't be overly, <laughs> overly specific on that question, but, um, but for sure, I mean, if you, if you look at our banners and our brands, we're leaders in food e-commerce share. We are growing that channel uh, very aggressively. But I don't really think about it um, in terms of a penetration rate or a target necessarily, because what, what I want to do is to, to make sure that we're allowing our brands and our frontline teams to provide shopping experiences for our customers in whichever channel that they would like to shop in them. Of course, online is a key focus for us. And, and more so, not about the channel, but it's more about the digital engagement, because as we look across uh, the basket, we, we for sure see that our omni-channel customers spend more, mm -hmm. uh, they are more loyal, they're more engaged, and, uh, and it says that that's really kind of what they want and what they're interested in and from, from us. And so I think that we'll continue to see acceleration in the channel. For sure, stores are really, really important. We're seeing customers gravitate more and more back to our stores, you know, kind of post, uh, post COVID. But, but that, uh, that unified commerce that you're talking about really is the, the focus, our omni-channel experience is where we're really focused at. We're, and we're really making some good improvements there. That's Fantastic. Um, you, um, you mentioned the competitive landscape and competitors in the audience. Yeah. Um, I, I have a very euphemistically phrased question about consolidation in the industry and, and how Ahold is thinking about kind of um, either growing your footprint, kind of changing the business to respond to a fast changing competitive landscape. And I mean, obviously, Rodney McMullen was on the stage sure. earlier. There's, there's Kroger Albertsons going on. But there's a lot of other consolidation and, and new, new players that maybe weren't yeah. competitive in grocery like five years ago. So, yeah. so how is Ahold thinking? about the current competitive moment and the right way to kind of strategize to stay at the forefront of the yeah. industry. Yeah, well, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful business, I think, first of all, right? I mean, the industry that we're in is ever-changing. We have the opportunity to serve customers and families, and we're kind of at the center of, of the conversation most mornings and most nights. And I think to the mm -hmm. point that uh, you're making, we, we see a lot of consolidation happening in the marketplace. As I think about Ajo Delays, uh, first and foremost, we have wonderful brands. We have brands with very strong uh, heritage. We have brands with very strong uh, share positions. Uh, we are the leader in the markets on the East Coast that we, that we serve. Our, our beautiful The Giant Company just had its 100-year anniversary. If you haven't seen their celebration, you should log on and take a look at it. Uh, our beautiful Food Lion brand is, is focused on its 40, uh, 43 consecutive quarters of, of comp growth. is really remarkable, remarkable trend. And so we see a lot of room still for organic expansion. We're very commercially aggressive on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. But to the point that you're making, we also plan to grow in an inorganic way. And I think that the combination of organic inorganic, but also back to the point around media, and we could get into a few others, but 
there's revenue stream growth that is, and dollars are mixing buckets that we also see opportunities for, for growth in, partly for funding of, of some of the change inside of the industry. Tech investments are more and more part of uh, our portfolio. So we, we see a, a good opportunity for, for our business to really grow. We're very aggressive there, and it'll be a combination of organic, inorganic, and a few of these other these other kind of strategic plays that we're making. That's so interesting. So it, just to make sure I'm, I'm understanding, inorganic is kind of the, the retail media business, potentially other new new technology type type offerings that you can bring. Scaled to the acquisition. Mm. Yeah. Cool. That's that's a lot on your plate, and a lot of a lot of non-traditional grocery things that that kind of are maybe going to be levers for for growth for you uh, over the next few years. Yeah, I think the the ecosystem. I mean, part of the opportunity is the partnerships that we create in the marketplace, right, in our communities and the ecosystem, whether it be technology providers or 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 others, is is a part of the solution here. And I think that um, that that's there's a lot there's a lot that we can do together there. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I mean, I, I love how fast it's changing. I think it, it means people need places like Grocery Shop to come and talk about all Indeed, the changes right. going Indeed, on. Yeah. But, uh, but it also just keeps things interesting. It's great keeps, business model for keeps, you at Nijo. Keeps, keeps, <laughs> keeps, yeah. keeps you on your toes. Um, yeah. um, uh, we've been talking the whole conversation about the blend of technology and people um, that makes up the industry today as, as you confront challenges, uh, yeah. address opportunities. Um, let's talk about associates, frontline workers, for a yeah. little bit. And, and kind of what are you doing? I, I know they're super important to you, what are you doing to kind of help them kind of adapt to a world where technology is increasingly going to help them do their jobs or change the way that their jobs and their roles work? Yeah, no, I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to talk about our teams and our associates and, of course, all the great people here in the, in the, in the room today. I mean, first and foremost, I think that our jobs when we're investing in technology is to make their lives easier to make their life simpler and not to launch uh, technologies that they have to figure out, but we figure it out for them and we allow them to uh, perform their jobs and to have more time with customers in the store, more time for their own personal development. One of the things that we uh, started uh, a, a bit over a year ago is we put together a group kind of training session with our technology teams to where they had retail immersion. So they would go and spend time in the stores to really kind of look firsthand like what is it like to, to work in a, in a store? What's it like to work in a distribution center? And, and certainly there's an appreciation that you grow for the business in, 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 in doing that, but you also see the, the challenges and you see kind of what solutions need to be solved. And so there's a number of things that we've done there. Uh, the other thing that we've done, Joe, coming out of the pandemic is lots of change, lots of channel shifting, lots of new tools. And so just revamping our training, our training tools, our training manuals and things um, like that are, are the other areas of focus. But for me, I think the opportunity that we have here when you think about uh, uh, grocery shop and the combination of great people, great technology, and a really core kind of passion for food and for customers, I kind of call that magic, and I think that's the opportunity that we really have as an industry, and of course, for Ahold Delays, we believe very much in the combination of that and our success in the future. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's one of the things that I love about this industry, that people do have 30-plus year careers in grocery. It feels like that's one of the things that maybe technology is going to change a little bit, or the, yeah. the kinds of careers yeah. people have will certainly be very yeah. different. Their growth trajectories yeah. within an organization because of technology. Yeah. And, and how fast technology is yeah. changing. It yeah. feels like it's going to be a bit different to how it's been in the past. Indeed. No, I think so. M maybe my hair won't be as gray as a result one of these days. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. Um, so... Last question is really, you know, again, we're we're here for the next few days talking about the future of retail. I'm wondering yeah. if there are like one or two big developments. Um, you've already kind of mentioned AI. I sort of think we we're going to get through this conversation without talking about AI, but you you, you mentioned it, so it's I out there. I ruined it, Joe. Um, are there one or two big developments coming that you're especially excited about as far as the opportunity? It could be technology. It could be other things in yeah. the industry. Um, opportunities for all delays yeah. and its and its banners. Yeah, I think that. Um, well, one we've talked about, right? We've talked about consolidation, right? I think consolidation is uh, for sure going to be a, a key focus in the future. And the ability to do that, but keep in mind that this is a, a local business, like selling groceries is about a local connection with, with customers. 
Size and scale are necessary, I think, for the future, but only if it can be applied at, uh, at a local level. So that would be one. Uh, data, for sure, is uh, um, a really, I think, uh, important development for us. I think all of us could come on stage here and talk about all the great work that we've done around data governance or data integration or the work that we've done around hyper-personalization or our ability to kind of integrate customer data into um, our digital tools. But to be honest, I think that when we sit here 10 years from now, we'll look back and say, we weren't that good at it today mm. by comparison relative of where to we're relative to where we need to go. And I think that that'll be a key important uh, step for us. And then finally, you know, culture matters, right? Culture in an organization matters, leadership matters, and at the end of the day, I think that our ability to create an environment and create opportunities for our teams to lead and to give them the opportunities to bring all that we're talking about together mm -hmm. in a very kind of differentiated customer experience is how I think we really, we really win for the future, Joe. Yeah, I think that's a great way to wrap things. So technology to enable you to be bigger and yet more personal at the same time, the large and the small kind of, kind of meshing seamlessly. And, and of course, the role of associates in, in helping make those moments that matter matter to yeah. your shoppers. So great way to leave things. JJ, thank you so much for pleasure, joining Joe. us on stage. It's a pleasure talking with you. Yeah. Thank you all as well. Thank you.